Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of Show Me Your Junk. Last week, I was so lucky, I got to help do an estate clean out and I got a massive free haul. I'll insert a little clip of that right here. Now, some of the items were ceramic and I wanted to do a huge batch paint to get items ready for my retail booth and my website. So I'm gonna bring you along, show you how I do that and show you some of these amazing DIY colors. Let's get started. Before we can paint, we've got to figure out what we have. To be honest, I don't even know what's in these totes. Lane is down digging with me and we found baskets. This one's going to be super cute with a plant in it. We found baskets. We just <laughs> look. More. Not baskets. These are um, hot pads, I'm assuming. Ah. Uh, they're going to be wall decor now for me. <laughs> I went through the containers that had the smalls. I found some really neat little things. This video is going to be all about baskets and ceramics. Found more baskets. <laughs> These are really neat. They are going to need a good, 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 good clean. This one hangs on the wall. And this is a good sturdy one. I love the handles. Cool. Might paint this up. Another picture that'll look pretty painted. This chicken, even though I'm not the biggest chicken fan, is mine. And a weather vane with a super cool base. Oh, there was a huge glass chicken and he broke, unfortunately, but I kept his head. <laughs> These roosters as well as this copper pot and then all that copper you see on my tablescape. just going through some more totes I found these really neat vintage teacups some ceramic angels and this beautiful chartreuse fiesta wear thanks Donna for helping me identify it I really appreciate you whoa look at all of these marbles you can tell I'm excited and we need to clean them they're dusty This box had 12 liter bottles inside of it, so these are going to be fun painted up. We got a bunch of chickens, some angels, let's do this. Alright y'all, I'm hopping on the baking soda train. We are going to mix baking soda with our DIY paint. I'd say I used about one part paint to one part baking soda, maybe a little less. And of course, you usually get one coat coverage with these darker colors anyway, but adding the baking soda in made this so easy to cover up even this shiny ceramic rooster. I will link these plastic eggs below on my Amazon shop, but I just stick a dowel inside of them when I paint them to make it easier to work with, and then stick them inside of a piece of floral foam to dry. Moving on to color number two, we have DIY beadboard. Again, it's covering the shiny vase super nicely. There's my dog Maisie. It was such a pretty day here in Kansas. Drop me a comment below. Let me know where you live and what the weather's been like. Moving on to color number three, this is DIY apothecary. This is my number one hands down favorite color. Next up, we've got DIY Weathered Wood. This is a close second for me, and I actually love the way it looks with Apothecary. If you follow me on social media, we played a fun game. It was called Guess This Color. Here it is. The color was a water lily. Now, in the picture, it had a bunch of white wax over it, so you will see that final look here in just a bit. And of course, you can find all of the paint and products I'm using today on my website, upcycledbybree.com, and in my booths here in Topeka, Kansas. I will have those linked below as well. Everything got a chance to dry overnight. 
And here we are the next morning. Look at that baking soda texture. This isn't even white waxed yet. It looks so cool. Now I'm going to show you how I achieve different looks just by switching up which wax I'm using. Everything's going to get a coat of DIY clear wax first and then I will move into the colored waxes. I'm for white wax and I just wanted to emphasize how buttery smooth this wax is. I don't think y'all understand. And it's BOC free, only nine ingredients, all natural, so I'm not scared to rub it on my hand like that. Because the paint is water soluble until sealed, I could use a wet rag just to clean up the handles of this pail before I give it a coat of white wax as well. I'm finally opening my IOD hardware stamps. I'm going to be using a couple of the tiniest ones on my eggs. I cut them off and use a piece of 220 grit sandpaper to very lightly rough up the edge, which makes the ink or the paint that you're using adhere better to the stamp. It gives it a little bit of tooth. I'll be using IOD's ink in white. I apply a little bit to this paper plate and then I use my brayer to very lightly rub over the stamp. I'm not pressing hard, otherwise I will come out with a very blurry image. Stamping on a curved surface gets kind of tricky. It takes a little bit of practice, but you're just going to want to hold that stamp in place with one finger while you're gently pressing around the edges. The key is to make sure you have one finger on it at all times so it doesn't shift. Now I'm getting everything set up to tag for either my booth or my website, but I figured we could take a before and after look at everything. on to the next grouping we have the apothecary most of the time i love to use white wax over it look at it bring out that detail i went ahead and did a little wet distressing on the candlesticks as well because i am loving the way apothecary and red look together it gives me total vintage vibes The next group up is the weathered wood, and I can't wait till you see how these turned out. Of course, again, all of the paint and products are available on my website, upcycledbybree.com. All right, let me show you why I love weathered wood. All of these pieces are painted in the same color, but look what a drastic difference you can get on this color just by using different waxes. These three pieces have the white wax. 
This has black wax and this has dark wax. Now all of the pieces got a coat of clear wax first. That way I could control the colored waxes. Look at how beautifully it sits in that baking soda texture. I pulled back some of the paint on this one to let that green come through, stuck some olive branches in it. And that's perfect. So maybe you're not into the pastel colors of spring. Generally, wax is going to be your very last step, but I thought these needed just a little something else, so I decided to try stamping them after the wax, and although they were just a little bit blurred, I think it came out very well. You can definitely tell what each of them are. Next up, we have the beadboard batch. I'm using a crockery stamp here with the IOD blue ink. And again, on the curved surface, the big key is to keep one finger in place on the middle the whole time and gently press your stamp down around your curved surface while keeping that one finger in place. But distressing, I added just a touch of black wax to give it a little bit of an antiqued feel. On this white picture, I decided to use some of the Verdigris Shipwrecked Wax. It is a beautiful teal color. It sits down in all those details just beautifully. I'm applying it pretty heavy and then we'll wipe a little bit off. And here is a look at the final batch of the beadboard products. And you can see what different effects we can get by distressing and waxing. Here is that angel that I posted on social media asking if anybody knew the color. Now adding this white wax over it does change it up a little bit so maybe that wasn't fair. <laughs> 
but I wanted to show you the difference between the white wax and the black wax on this color. It is crazy. I'm just applying a crockery stamp to this cute little tin. You guys know the drill. Hold it in place. Make sure it's all pressed down. It came out just beautifully. And I'm going to add a little touch of a stamp here on the back as well. I did to go with black wax on this and I think it gave it such a beautiful French country look. What do you think? Do you like the white wax or the black wax better on top of the water lily? Leave me a comment below. The last thing here to stamp is that colorful biscotti jar. I'm using the queen bee stamp and some floral swag. You guys, I will link all of these stamps down below so you know which one is which and then the link for you guys to find your local retailer. Here is our last batch to tag up and get ready for sale. I am in love with this color. I don't think it gets used often enough make sure you check out my website. I do have some available if you want to give it a try. project of the day is going to be to clean out some baskets. I have my air compressor out and I just use that to blow off any dust. I'm sealing up the inside of those apple baskets and then the other baskets come inside and if they need washed I just use Dawn dish soap, water, and make sure I get them dry very quickly. So a couple of those little colorful trivets are on either end of the basket display I have above my bed. I think it added the perfect touch of color. I love baskets so much. Now I do have some available on my website as well, so be sure you check that out, upcycledbybree.com, along with all those DIY paint and products I showed you today. I sure hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm gonna go work on that stuff. I will see you Sunday. We will work on some furniture from this haul, show you some more baskets and you know, just whatever junk I end up working on. So until then, I'll see you next time. Bye friends.